Hi, everyone. I'm Mom and Dad. So, um, I didn't really know quite what I wanted to do, so I figured I would just go through some stuff that I own. That's kind of interesting. I tend to buy stuff, weird stuff. I used to buy um, like higher end weird stuff, artifacts and things like that. And then that got really expensive and uh, time consuming and realized it was sort of taking over. So I uh, ended up sort of focusing on smaller, just weird things that were uh, affordable, but still sort of like filled that uh, need to like own things that are uh, kind of weird. So these, I found these, these are some of my favorite things. And I actually haven't read these in a while. Just looking through them real quick. Like some of them are, are a little harsh, but they're funny. So these I found, I think I got these on eBay. They're uh, the Starbucks, um, you know, like suggestion cards. And they are they were all from the same Starbucks. An employee there had uh, saved them. And they're all from the same dude who kept leaving uh, suggestions. And he's clearly not a big fan of the Starbucks. But he goes over and over. So maybe he's a fan. <laughs> He's a fan of coffee, but he's not a fan of these people. So this is, first of all, I'll show you his handwriting. Which right away is sort of like yelling without, without yelling. Uh, this one says, no tip jars, you bums wear pants, all wear hairnets. You cake coffee sandwiches are all stale. What mafia do you belong to? Your bathrooms are full of piss. Shit, your tables, chairs are all broken. You are overpriced. Your napkins you can use to sandpaper wood. You underline those. He's really pissed about the napkins. Um, that's a good one. No tip jars. Reduce your high prices. Clean your stores. He's unhappy. I think what he's saying is that uh, they don't deserve tip jars. I don't think he's saying clean your stores and also you guys you don't deserve that. Uh, no tip jars, again. Clean your dirty floors. Pigs, reduce your prices. Wear a clean apron, pigs. He doesn't think he... He calls them pigs a lot through here. Um, you get great pay. Checks in your aprons, tables, dirty and broke. Your bathroom floors are all dirty. Put hairnets on, men. Wear shirts, pants. Apparently, people aren't wearing pants at the Starbucks. Clean ones, shave. Wear hairnets. Your coffee cakes, sandwiches, etc., are stale. Get a life, pigs. No tip jars. Put clean aprons on. So they go on and on like this. Uh, let me find one more. All of them are the same. I'm wondering if you maybe wrote some of these or all of them on the same day. Um, your cookies and coffee, cake, or stale. Uh, don't like Starbucks. Too dirty. Your staff is all dirty. Aprons, men need haircuts. Shave your pigs. Lowdowns, and that's uh, underlined. Low downs. How dare you come to work? Dirty aprons. Watch. You will all be closed. Your restrooms have piss shit. All over your floors are dirty and out. How dare you bums have a tip jar? How dare you bums have a tip jar? So, and there are a bunch of them. Um, so those were funny. And, you know, that was like $2 on eBay or something like that, which uh, was worth, well worth the $2. And maybe free shipping. Um, so what else? I got, here's sort of a, another example of things that I like to buy for no particular reason. Um, this is a, uh, spoon that went through someone's, uh, disposal. Uh, 
It's a nice one. I don't know why I bought it, but it's nice. Um, I'm also really into uh, objects that misspell the word your, which I, which I would have thought was sort of like a current, more of a current thing. Um, but apparently people have been misspelling your for, for years. Uh, this one is, these are two pins. Uh, this one says, does mama know you're out? And uh, you are a wonderful boy. Both spelled incorrectly, which is amazing. And then I have this thing. It's a uh, giant ruler for um, Mastercraft uh, Casket Company in Michigan. And it says, See Freddy, which also looks like it, it's probably not spelled correctly, when you are ready. Uh, so I bought that and uh, really happy with that, with that purchase. I think it was well worth the $7, I think, something like that. Um, I'm also into um, sort of combining found uh, similar objects, or they don't have to be similar, but these two are. These are a couple other pin backs. Uh, this one says, I rent my bed. And here's another little tiny one uh, that says celibate. And uh, it's a picture of someone sleeping in a bed. But that was an interesting combination. Um, one more with a pin. Uh, I have good teeth. And, uh, just a bag of someone's teeth. Is this, is the camera backwards? It's, no, no, it's right. It's correct. That's right? Yeah, that's right. Okay. All right. Awesome. Uh, let's see. Um, I'll show you some stuff on my walls. Uh, so this is, this is my office, I guess. This is where I, you know, do stuff. So this is a wall that is mostly unframed stuff that um, I just wanted to be able to look at. Um, and so here's some things. Uh, there's a, a group. There's an organization called Center for Creative Works that um, it, it's uh, an art center uh, for people uh, with disabilities. And um, so this is a piece that was made by a guy named John Serrano uh, that they sold. And so when they sell it, the money goes you know, back to the organization and also to the individuals. I thought this was a great piece. I'm still trying to find a uh, frame for that one. This here is, uh, I got at a, a uh, estate sale with, with uh, Jimmy, my brother there. Uh, he, it was, I think uh, the guy who was running, his, his father had died, a grandfather, and he had all sorts of tools and things. And he had this thing stapled to the wall. And he sold it to me for a buck, and he couldn't understand why I wanted it, but I'm not very handy. So Jimmy bought the tools. And I, and I bought this. Uh, I also bought this. I think that was the same, I think that was the same estate sale. Um, the guy was, uh, I think an amateur wood carver. Uh, that was something he did. Um, what else? This here is an object that I found in an alley. So that was free. And uh, it's actually, it's like one of my favorite objects. I've had a few people ask to buy it. And uh, I just, you know, I don't want to get rid of it because, you know, it looks like a little dude and a little secret agent or a little, I don't need, I don't know. 
I don't know what it was either, which is which makes it more interesting. It almost looks like it was maybe like a little, um, like a smushed um, photo frame or something. It's got like a little clip, but I don't know. So there's that. Um, let's see what else here. There's a drawing I did uh, when I was a kid. And uh, it's kind of like it's the same stuff I draw now, like skulls and daggers and knives and stuff like that. So I thought it was funny that not, not much has changed. Um, let's see what else. And then this wall, a lot of this is pieces from other people that I've bought or traded. Um, oh, and uh, one of my other favorite objects is this hot dog, this painting of a hot dog. Um, I'm guessing it came out of like a food truck. Uh, it looks like, you know, you would like reach out, pull it down to grab, you know, the hot dog bones from behind or something, but this is that. Can you guys see that? Yep. Okay, great. Yep. Um, let's see here. That is a drawing that a friend did and had, um, and he was drunk and cut his finger um, while opening uh, a piece of art that he had bought from someone else, like a super valuable piece of art. And uh, so he stopped opening the package and then just drew that. And, um, I bugged him for a long time to, to give that to me, and he finally did. Um, let's see. I'll just sort of show you other stuff. This here. So that's uh, from two pieces of mail that I got. The top one. I got, I can't remember, maybe five or six years ago, and the bottom was a year ago from two different artists. Um, and uh, I just liked the writing and obviously the little drawing, so I saved it. One day they were sort of, I was going through a box of stuff I had and they were next to each other and I thought they looked good together, so I taped them together and framed them. Um, let's see. Oh, this is uh from it's a uh lino print from a a local tattooer um and i bought one from her her name's amelia martin and uh she gave me two so i had an extra one and uh i didn't know what to do with it so i i put it on the bottom of this shelf because i didn't have another frame for it and then on top of it is uh an award that I bought. This one I think I got in an estate sale. It says champion egg producer, 256 eggs per hen, housed with high line layers, 1964. And then I have that paired with a press photo of a uh, deformed uh, chicken egg. So, um, yeah, that's some stuff that I own. Um, any questions? Anything people want to see? All right. Well, I have a question. Yeah, go for it. So, I, my question is about the, the two pieces of mail is really what struck me on, on that. Yeah. Think of this is the idea of like creating art out of things that weren't intended to be art in the first place. Um, and the other thing that these aren't really questions; these are things I'd love for you to talk about if you feel like it. Um, sure. The, and the other thing is is um, it seems like you have um, do you have 
a purpose other than that it seems to make you happy. That's what I'm noticing. Like you're like, I like this. And then you yeah. just like, close to you. And is that, I'm revealing too much of myself in this question, but like, <laughs> right. are you just being happy? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> um, I think uh, that's a good question. I think that um, when I was collecting the sort of like more expensive, like rare, pieces which which i think is, is the stuff that you would remember janelle like the skull they were like um peruvian elongated skulls and um things like that like rare skulls and stuff like that um part of the fun with that was like hunting them down finding the resources to buy them um and i got lucky early on when i was collecting i found a couple of really good pieces for really good prices. And I, I was able to flip those and, and make really good profit and then buy bigger pieces with that profit and, and whatnot. So, um, but it got to the point where I didn't really care about like any of these other objects or sort of like more ordinary objects or, or, or like that, like just sort of like pairing two random things. Um, and so it was sort of losing its, it's fun because I couldn't afford financially or probably mentally to continue collecting the, the like the super rare. Go to like antique shops and there's like nothing I would want to look for anymore um, because it's pretty rare that you're going to find that sort of stuff at an antique shop. Um, and so when I ended up selling this stuff, I, I started selling a couple of pieces because uh, we were moving um, down payment on a house and stuff like that. Um, and once I started selling them, it was sort of like an all or nothing thing. And I, I didn't want to have just some of the things that I had accumulated. So I got rid of almost all of it. And it took me a little while. And then I started sort of like reappreciating these, these smaller things. And, and yeah, and so I think you're right. It's, it makes me happy to see this stuff. These sort of just ordinary objects that didn't really cost me a lot to find and and a lot of them instead of searching out specific things a lot of them sort of like found me or, or whatever i came across instead of looking for these very specific pieces um and then another part of like specifically the envelope piece where i where i put the two envelopes together i've been doing this series where I just uh I call it unauthorized collaborations and so that was one of them um where I took those envelopes and put them together and then joining them together was sort of like making you know an assemblage or a collage and so I sort of said like I'm part of it as well and uh and then like I'll put I'll put them up on Instagram and, and tag the original artists and just say unauthorized collaboration I sort of think of like the shelf as one as well, the shelf with like the, the Christ head. Um, and that to me is kind of fun too, like doing these sort of like collaborations that weren't talked about. And they're innocent enough where I'm not ruining like someone's original piece of artwork or anything like that. I'm just sort of like taking something that came from them and like reappropriating it or, or putting it into something else, like my own idea. And if they don't like it, I can dismantle it and not call it a uh, collaboration anymore so um i think that's that's part of that um yeah i like that question that was a good question i hadn't thought about that thanks um so uh let's see i can show you guys some stuff that i've been working on too that's not unauthorized collaborations um since this like you know quarantine started, um, I've been experimenting a lot with uh, different mediums and, and other ways to make art. Um, since I'm a tattooer, um, a lot of what I do is draw for customers, and a lot of it is um, specific requests. And uh, so there's there's some freedom and I have customers who come to me because they like what I do and they want me to sort of draw their idea 
in my style, but a lot of it is also just kind of drawing what they want. So um, it's been nice to sort of just work on my own stuff. Um, and I've been doing commissions, uh, like painting commissions and visual art commissions. Um, but a lot of those people have just sort of given me loose ideas and let me do whatever I want. So that's been fun. Um, so I've been doing stuff like this. Most, I've been doing a lot of digital stuff because it's easier to, Casey uh, can work from home. And so I'm watching our daughter most of the time um, while she works. And so it's easier to work just on my iPad during that time. So I can work while she's napping or um, anywhere in the house instead of having to sit at the desk to work on a painting or drawing. So I've been doing a lot of work on, on my iPad, but then at night, a lot of times I'll work in my office and work on paintings and drawings. So this is one that I'm doing uh, as a gift and it's a collage of, of um, some drawings and, and a painting that I've done over the course of like six months. So I've been pairing a lot of, I've been going through a lot of works that I've started and put aside and started to pair them together. So this is one. Um, and so I started doing these backgrounds a while ago, maybe, maybe like six months ago or something. I started thinking of like where snakes might live if they lived in something other than the grass. Where did, I don't even know. Where did snakes live in the hole? They live organic um, things, so like rock shaped or, or whatever. I started thinking about where, the, where else they might live and I, and I just started to paint them. And so a lot of them were these shapes. I thought about the shape of a snake and that, you know, so the snake would sort of fit. The tail would be in here and it could loop up here and the head would be up there. Um, and then I wanted to pair that with sort of more uh, closer to life, like uh, drawings of snakes. Obviously this is still, it's an angular drawing and, and snakes aren't totally shaped like this, but you know, you could tell what it is. Um, so that's one thing. I've been working on. Um, what else? I've got, I'll show you. This piece here is a, a bigger collage that I'm working on. It's also a lot of um, like discarded uh, pieces that I that I started and, and didn't like and I set aside. Um, so I'm sort of like bringing them all back together. And it's mostly um, drawings and paintings that I did. And they're, um, I'm piecing them together on top of this large print that I made of a, of a digital drawing I did. This is it here. So that's still in the works. None of it's like glued down or anything. It's something that I'm going to... Um, just work on for however long it takes. Um, which is also like another thing that's kind of hard for me is um, I like to sort of start something and just get it done as soon as quickly as I can. So this is also sort of like a practice and patience for me to, to do something like that. Um, and then this is an example of something that's a little less loose. A lot of stuff I'm doing these days is like, loose and like maybe kind of weird. Uh, and this is something I did a couple of years ago. I did uh, four of these. There are these large drawings of uh, eagles and they're on uh, coquille paper, which is, if people don't know, it's like a textured paper um, that you can use a uh, colored pencil with. So it gives it this uh, sort of peppery look, which is really nice. Um, so this was another this is a project that I did where it just sort of like took time and patience, which isn't always something I, I am good at utilizing. So there. Especially like. And it's, you know, big 
it's a big piece. Um, oh, this is one more sort of collage piece that I've been working on. And that's more um, bits of paintings and drawings and stuff that I did sort of piecing them together. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's just sort of like some of the stuff I've been doing during this time. Um, any more questions? <laughs> Comments? Anyone want to tell me something they've been working on? That's cool. I don't know if you have a question. Oh, no. Somebody, whoever went, go ahead of me because I'll hop off. Mom. That's my mom. <laughs> the eagle that you drew, did that take a long time? I, I'm impressed with it. Um, thanks, Mom. Um, yeah, it probably took... Um, I don't remember how long the drawing took. Maybe a couple. Maybe I worked on the drawing for a couple of days. But... Um, so like the rendering, the like coloring it. Um, I probably worked on it for a week. I worked on it at the shop. Um, so I'd work on it during the day when I wasn't tattooing. And I was working on it, I think during a slow time. So there was a lot of downtime. Um, prob probably, I probably worked on it for a week. Yeah, oh. it took long. That, that specific one. And then I did a few others that, uh, I think, so I think I worked on them all together for maybe, I might've done it for two months. Okay. But, yeah, that particular one, yeah, maybe a week or two. I don't remember. But yeah, it, it was it was time consuming and it definitely hurt my hands because it's just like bearing down with a colored pencil. Um, but I think I kept all of the pencils. Some I think I still have them somewhere, just like little nubs <laughs> somewhere. I don't know where they are, but I like to keep things like that. Um, let me see. Here's another project. It's just sort of like an idea of show you, I guess, like some of the stuff I think about doing that's not just like tattoo related. Um, I had this idea before, before the pandemic happened. Um, and then it sort of seemed fitting to work on it once we all sort of went into quarantine. But, um, I thought of taking the lyrics to the song, It's the End of the World, as we know it, and I Feel Fine by R.E.M., because there are a lot of lyrics. Um, and figuring, first of all, figuring out what all the lyrics are, because as far as I know, I couldn't find any uh, lyric sheets, any official lyric sheets. So I spent hours listening and re-listening to the song and, uh, and reading... Um, some of the lyrics that people have posted online and finally came down to what I'm pretty sure is, is at least 98% accurate. Um, and so I, you know, I've got them all written out all the lyrics and um, the idea was to then take all of the letters from all of the words and break it down, break the lyrics down to just um, rows of the letters. So it's no longer, the lyrics, it's just all of the letters that are in the song. Um, I don't know why I thought about doing that. I was pretty obsessed with the idea for a long time. And then when this quarantine happened, I was like, all right, great. I can finally work on this thing. And I got down to getting all of the lyrics organized. And I sat down to start um, sorting out all the individual letters and, uh, and it turns out that that's really boring. So I stopped doing it. So I'll, you know, maybe I'll pick it up at some point, but that's, that's as far as I got with that. Um, so the end, like the end result was not exciting to do. So I, I stopped doing it, but so that's sort of like another example of uh, stuff I've been working on or stuff that's been going through my head during this. Um, and then sort of related to that, I found these, old notebooks from from sim days um where you know now i'm sure like most of us do i keep a lot of ideas on my phone and my notes app um but you know then which was 
what, like 20, 20 years ago, right, Janelle? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, used to carry around notebooks. So these, so here are some ideas I had uh, in college, which I still, I still kind of like some of them. Some of them are pretty derivative, um, but so here's one. So I've always been pretty blind without my glasses. Can't see very well. Um, so it's all like instructions, you know, like instructional pieces for either me or, or for other people. Um, this one says, uh, leave your glasses at home for a day, follow someone all day. Um, which I think I got from um, really bad with word recall when I'm under pressure. Uh, who's a performance artist? Sophie Cal did a lot of like following random people. Uh, follow someone all day. Talk to someone all day. Eat only bread and drink only water. Find yourself in love with the wrong person. Find that these are things to make your life more interesting. So that one ended up a little sentimental too. Um, and then, uh, let's see, find some other. Leave something to dissolve. Rework something very old. Revisit something very old. Um, which I guess is like what I'm doing now. Which is funny too, because I think I wrote these for me to like revisit ideas I had that at that time I thought were very old, but it's 20 years old, so I, I don't really know what those ideas were. Um, and then also I, I drew a lot of um, uh, like diagrams for ideas I had. Here's one of them. I think that top thing is maybe supposed to be a reel to reel. I, I don't know what that is. But there's a chair in there. Um, is it a sink? Ah, it might be a sink. Yeah, probably a sink. Actually, and now that you say that, I remember there was a a bathroom. Do you remember the bathroom, Janelle? Like at the like the top of the ramp by Sim. It's like around the corner. You would sort of walk up a ramp. Yes. There's a bathroom up in the left hand corner. Yep. I remember that bathroom. Uh, it was always like clean and uh, I don't know there's it was like very uh there's something about it that I thought was interesting I remember the sink was was part of that yeah so you're right Jimmy that's that's a sink good call yeah. I, don't I don't know what, I don't know what the idea was there maybe I wanted to put a chair in the bathroom and look at the sink I, I don't know what that was but yeah that, good call the, the, that drawing reminds me of that um that artist who like tried to breathe water Oh, Chris Burden. Yeah, and had someone shoot him and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I was super into him, um, especially at that time. So, yeah, good call. I'm going to need you to look through the rest of the stuff with me to <laughs> figure out what it means, Jimmy. Um, here's another one. I guess it's a table. And I don't know what that's supposed to be. But um, I've had all these sort of like ideas, like architectural ideas since I was young. And um, so I'll, I'll draw, you know, pictures of them. I've never done anything with them, but I drew one here up on my, one of my boards for a shelf right there. And it was, I had drawn just this with like the piece of wood through the middle of the shelf. And then uh, Casey had come in here and drew the people playing ping pong on it. And uh, I didn't, I didn't know. And so she told me, I think like a week or two later, she's like, did you ever see that uh, drawing I left for you? Which I thought was pretty great. Um, and uh, let me see. I'm trying to find maybe one more good like instructional. Well, here's a here's a diagram I drew for um, 
an idea I had for like some of the sound work I was doing in college. So it's nice to, to have these. Um, got another notebook here that's also full of them. And uh, I went through it a couple months ago and really still liked some of the ideas. And the notebook was only, it was like three quarters of the way filled. And um, I always had this weird thing about notebooks where I feel like they have to be perfect. And it wasn't until just like the last year that I realized they don't have to be. And I can't, I became like really more comfortable with filling notebooks. Um, so I sort of picked up from where I left off 20 years ago and started filling this notebook with more ideas. So it's sort of like a collaboration with myself from 20 or so years ago. Um, let's see here. There's a piece for John Holland. Um, there's another document one. Document everything. Take photographs of everything that I own in my house. Uh, for articles that I own multiples of, like pants or magazines and CDs. Only take a photo of what they are stored in. Um, make note of container and articles. Make a typewritten list of everything. So I was also like really into this idea of like documenting mundane stuff and I still am in it, but I don't know why. So it's interesting to go through these things and sort of see what um, still interests me, you know, 20 something years later. And when I'm still sort of having these like half ass ideas about and then not ever finishing. So yeah. Uh, what has it been like two hours? <laughs> not, not quite. Not quite. I won't. I, I know I put time limits on these things uh, and I don't want to hold you too much longer, but I do have a question. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go for it. So I well, I have a million, but I won't. I'll only give you half of that. Um, so my I have a question about the collage work that you were doing from your old from older work or unfinished pieces. And mm -hmm. I'm just again, this is like a question, non question. I'm curious about that. Um, and my curiosity comes from a couple of places. One is, I, I don't know your full process, like I haven't known your like artistic process over or development over many years. Um, but as far as what, when you're talking about perfection and notebooks and all of that, do you, um, were those pieces, the first part of my question is, were those pieces that you felt were incomplete or not, or not as good as you wanted them to be, or like they weren't standing on their own and then you chose to deconstruct them into a collage or mm -hmm. are you just like, were you, were you finished with them? Like they were fine when you finished them, but you now are like done with how they existed and you want to change them. And then the answer to that makes me have another question. Okay. Um, <laughs> most of them were, were pieces that I started um, and either didn't know how to finish or I finished and, and then didn't like them um, the way they were finished, but thought that there were elements that were worth um, keeping and maybe working with somehow. Um, and um, just recently I started redoing older pieces too. Like uh, I have a painting that I finished four or five years ago that I just started painting over because I don't, I wasn't happy with it anymore. I don't like it. I didn't like it anymore. Um, but mostly what they come from is um, I also used to, I, I would get really bummed out if I tried to do something and I didn't like the outcome and I would, you know, like a lot of times throw it away or destroy it or something like that. And so instead of doing that, I'll just set them aside and do something else to not think about it. And so a lot of this stuff is, stuff that I was able to set aside and then slowly come back to um, and piece it together. Um, so that, that's most, I think that's mostly what it is. It's sort of taking these ideas that are kind of like ended up being partial ideas that I thought were finished ideas and finding a way to bring them together to finish them all like in maybe in one big collage. That's 
that's really interesting. Thank you for that. I, I, um, it caught my attention because I know for myself, I'm, I'm finding that I'm much more um, willing to rework something instead of, instead of like completely walking away from or something that I might have been fine with, but I'm still interested in it. And so deconstructing it. And I, I do, I mostly write still, um, but even like dealing with words and language differently. And I, and I, and I'm wondering, I just had a birthday, so I just turned 40. So I'm like in that, that headspace where I'm like, is this, is this the thing that you get to do once you've been doing something for so long that you're like, yeah, you know, like basically right. F it, you can just work things however, or you have less, or once you're more secure in your art form that you feel comfortable, like basically messing around, you know, yeah. like, you, you like you feel like some some internal part has been established and you feel mm-hmm. like you're sure and like what you're capable of and then you feel freer to like cut things up and replace them yeah I, I think that is a big part of it you sort of put this time into something and um feel like you've finally given yourself permission to yeah to do that to rework it and maybe make it better or or make um maybe like a more, yeah, maybe like a mature version of it or something like that. Like the stuff, I think the stuff that anyone is doing 20 years later, right, is going to be a little more informed and like with uh, more life experiences, right? And like we've learned more and kind of have a better idea of, of uh, what works and what doesn't. What I, Like what I'm finding personally is um, a lot of stuff that I thought worked or liked was just, um, almost completely based on aesthetics, like, oh, this looks good. So just do it. Um, and so I'm trying to find a balance between working with stuff that just looks good and then stuff that actually sort of makes sense together for, you know, whatever reason. Um, but yeah, I, I like that. I think I, I definitely agree with that. I think there's something that comes with, yeah, with age or, or like having worked doing something like you said you're still writing and you've been doing that for so long and yeah i think you sort of we like earned that right like we can finally give it to ourselves to like break it up a little bit right and um mess around with it in 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 sort of like more informed way like we know it's like taking something apart when you're a kid and then taking the same thing apart years later and then you actually know how to piece it back together um yeah, I think that's that sounds like maybe it makes sense. I don't know. I like that though. Yeah, I mean to bring it around to what you started with your collections, it's an interesting parallel to me of like beginning a beginning a hobby or a practice of collecting based on value or um or like perceived like rarity or um, you know, specialness of some kind that's kind of like a construct and it's like other people have bought into it, that's why it has actual financial value and to pull away from that and then begin collecting things that like just make sense to you or like are for happiness um, is another thing. I think, unfortunately, some of us feel like we need to earn later on, but it's right. It's an interesting parallel, I think, on that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And, and yeah, and, and I think there is a parallel between stuff like that, other hobbies and interests that we have, like collecting or whatever, and then the work that we do. I think there's always a parallel between that stuff, right? Um, yeah, yeah, I like that. Awesome. Does anyone else have any any questions? Or I'll, I'll stop um, waxing philosophical enough to let anybody else um, join in if they want, if they have any questions for Jason. I have a question for Jason. Um, yes, well- Jason, when you were selling off your um, the first type of collections that you had, and uh, you had to decide which ones you were going to sell off for deposits on the house and that type of thing, um, you said that you didn't sell all of them. Are there mm-hmm. some that are, are just going to stay with you for a long time that you had a reason not to sell them? Yeah, there are some things that were gifts that, that I wouldn't sell. Um, and it's sort of a nice, nice excuse to keep them. Hi, Lulu. <laughs> um and um but the other things that i kept from over the years like from when i was collecting that kind of stuff um 
a lot of it is not like the weirder or, or like rare artifact type stuff. A lot of it is is like simpler things, like uh, like this thing. Like it's just this like little. It's this painting of these two horses, and and Casey bought me a larger version of this years ago um, as a gift that's hanging in our bedroom that I've always loved. And then I, I got maybe get really into this particular print and I did like I dug into it and I found out that there are like different versions and different names and stuff like that. Um, and so the one in our room I love and I don't think I would sell it anyway, but it, it was a gift too. So it'll always stay there. But then this one, it was just like a really nice other version of it. And so like a lot of the stuff that I've, that has stayed with me is just sort of stuff that's really not valuable, you know, um, but just makes me happy to look at. And I have like a little box as well that I found at a antique shop when we were living in Weymouth. It's like a little trap door. It's just like a little box. And uh, it just sits on my bureau in our room. That's always, I don't want to get rid of it. There's something about certain objects that just kind of stick with you. I don't know why, but so, when I was selling stuff off, most of the stuff that I kept was not um, anything that was super valuable. Does that make sense? Yeah, thank you. And then these Starbucks, uh, and then these things. <laughs> <laughs> it was worth keeping. Those are great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll put out a little zine of them to send them out. <laughs> um, I think you should... Uh, to go into Starbucks and do the same thing. <laughs> Write the same reviews? Uh, similar, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Perform them until I get kicked out. <laughs> <laughs> or do the opposite, say really nice things. Like, yeah. you all are very clean. And um, you should have more tip cars. <laughs> so like that. I think that's probably, that's probably how I would do it now. But yeah, I like that idea. All right, well, thanks, Janelle. This was super fun. Absolutely, thank you. It was, it was great. It was great. It gave me a lot to think about personally. I really appreciate you doing it. It's really lovely to have the opportunity to be in a home that isn't our own for even a brief and virtually and vicariously. Um, I know most people can relate to that at this point. Um, Thank you so much. If anybody yeah, thinks of a question they wish that they had asked, uh, they could find you um, on Instagram, right? Oh yeah, Instagram is just Jason Talbot. All one word, easy, easy to find. All right. Or call, you know, call me because I think half of you have my number. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so 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 much. I really really appreciate awesome. you doing this. It was great to listen and uh, stay safe, everybody. Um, you too. And have a great rest of your weekend with that baby. Thanks, thanks, Janelle. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs>